Krauss, start talking to the people about would they be, they understand that banks aren't lending money. And banks certainly aren't lending money to investors that have a bunch of properties already. We're, the, we're, we're like the terrible taboo today, all right? So what I try to do is I try to buy houses with none of my own money by getting people who have free and clear houses to become the bank. So how do I do that? I find out, I've asked them the question, what do you think your house is worth? And then I ask them the question, do you have a mortgage? Now I know what they want for the house and I know that they don't have a mortgage on it, right? So what do landlords do all the time when they're bidding on properties? They call, they lowball everybody, right? Landlords, they go around there giving lousy offers everywhere, okay? So what we do is the opposite. We give them what they want. Mm. Even if their price is above what the market is, we give them what they want, mm. all right? The way we do that is your price with my terms, okay? <laughs> Let's just say that, for example, that we met somebody who was, was crazy, crazy guy. And uh, his house is probably worth six, seven hundred grand, but he says, uh, yeah, uh, my house is worth a million dollars. Guess what? I'll give him a million dollars. <laughs> I'll give him a million dollars. Here's how I'm going to do it. All right? I'm going to give him his price with my terms. I'll give you a thousand dollars a month for a thousand months. <laughs> thousand months. That's eighty-three years. Okay. He's never going to live to collect a thousand, and, and I'm not going to live either to pay. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Okay, but if I could, if he has a really nice house and I could rent his house out for $2,000 a month, I'd, I'd really like to take that house off of him. i buy it from him with no money down, 0% interest. I'm going to pay him $1,000 a month for 1,000 months. I'll never pay the house off, but who the hell cares? I'll rent it out for $2,000 a month. I'm making a grand a month off of a house I don't even own that I put no money into. Is there anybody here who would do that deal? Yes. Okay. Now, I know that's a crazy example, but I'm trying to make a point here that you'll remember. And the point is, is that you come up with the amount of money you're going to pay them every month. You come up with the amount of time it's going to take to pay that off. You give them the number that they want, and you structure the financing. <coughs> a lot of people say, well, I'm not going to give you a 0% interest loan. So I didn't ask for a loan. <coughs> Did you hear me ask for a loan? You asked me, you called me. Because you want to sell your home. I want to buy your home. I never asked you for a loan. However, if you do lend money, we got a program for that. You can come work with us on that. You don't, All got, right. money. You don't got money, you got a house. Yes, you don't <laughs> have money, you have a house. Okay, I'm buying a house. Uh, so the point is, is that uh, this is a financing business. You need to understand a little bit about financing if you're going to do that kind of thing. And, and go have some fun with it because you can make some beautiful deals. Imagine if you had 10 houses and you were paying $1,000 a month off. Okay, and a hundred percent of that money was getting, was paying off the principal in those houses. Wouldn't your net worth be going up by ten thousand dollars a month? And I'm not counting the cash flow. I'm not counting the depreciation. I'm not counting the appreciation. There's so many other ways you're gonna make money off of. It's crazy. Great, great way to do deals. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, say I find a bank on property. Okay, uh, uh, now there's a situation where I'm paying cash for it. So this is on the opposite side of the scale. If you've got a free and clear house, I'm going to pay the highest possible number, okay? But I'm going to structure the terms in my, but if it's a, if it's a bank on property, if you bid on any REOs these days, the best way to buy those is with cash, okay? So if I'm using my cash or a private lender's cash, it doesn't matter. That's a situation where I'm lowballing it, okay? So that's another way that we buy houses today, and we're using none of our own money. We structure good deals. We get a $200,000 house for $130,000. There's plenty of people be interested in being involved in a deal like that. We also do subject twos. Jeremy's a real expert on it. You want to talk about it for a minute, Jeremy? Tell people how we do them. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Um, as everybody knows, subject two is pretty much taking over somebody's mortgage payment. So a lot of a lot of what I did in the beginning of my investing career, which is nine years ago, was um, find somebody that you know had some equity in their property and had mortgage payments that my tenants could afford. That's the whole point. That's what I'm looking for. I want mortgage payments that my tenants can afford because they're the ones paying them. And, you know, a little bit of cash flow. But a lot of times we're taking over, you know, we're taking over financing. I bought houses subject to a foreclosure action and, you know, turn around and resell the house or something like that before the foreclosure runs its course. Um, other times we reinstate the loans 
and we, and we might use money to put down to reinstate the loans, and now we got a loan that's on track. I mean, how, you, know, you know how much financing out there right now at like four and five percent? You know, it's crazy. But those are great loans. I can't get a loan at for those you rates. You can't do on-sale clauses on those. There's always do on-sale clauses on the loans. We um, we send a we send a bank to the letter saying, you know, hey, Jeremy and Phil are taking over the management of this property. They're going to be uh, collecting the rents and they're going to be paying the mortgage. Please send all future correspondence to them. That's it. I've never had any loan, any loan that the payments were, I've never heard a case at all where the payments were being made, where the loan was reinstated, where the payments are current, they're being paid every month. I've never heard a case where somebody, you know, called a loan. Now, if interest rates go up to 20%, like in, you know, we were, we were talking about before, like in the 80s, and you got a 4%, then they might say, hey, wait a second, <laughs> you know. I've had that happen. I've actually had where we did it exactly what you said. Uh, it was in Roxborough about 20 years ago. Roxborough, that doesn't matter back, but we did it, and it was a rental property, and they, they got real, real slick. They actually sent the foreclosure notice to that property. We didn't get it, yeah. and they they foreclosed on the property. We had to do a petition to set aside the sale. Yeah, right. a whole bunch of yeah, that's a mess. Now, this is a small little local yokel lender, you said? Roxborough, same as yeah. well. Okay, so I there's mean, a difference in that. We, didn't, we, we became aware of it when a guy showed up, and my tenant said, send me the money, don't send it to him. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> My that was my I'm, assignment I'm of rents, like an assignment of rents clause or something like that. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, we had to get an attorney about. He did it. Yeah, yeah. We got, got lucky because on my check, it just happened to have my address, and we said, you know, they didn't give us notice to where we had as our legal address, so we got the petition set aside to sale, so we got our property back, and then we had to refinance. So the I mean, property. we're on the deed as the owner, so they have to notify the owner of foreclosure they sale. They, well, we're on the deed. They have, they know the property. Is that? They, they know they. The tax the records property. went to the house. Yeah, went to the house. Oh yeah, tax yeah. records. Well, we always have tax records go to you know Sioux Falls, South Dakota, or wherever our mailing address is, or whatever. But the the um, or you know a PO box. Saying, especially we have rates that are that are real real. I mean, at the time so the rates were going up and whatever. But I'm looking now and I'm sitting the same thing. I have many mortgages that are you know three four percent in that rate. Right. But now I'm talking. I'm not talking like about that. portfolio lenders. I'm talking about pretender lenders. Pretender lenders are the guys that say they're lenders, but it's not their money. They take it and they say, here's some money on paper. You know, we just. It's just a line item on an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, you know, we're, we're gonna lend you money. Where's the money? Yeah, you know, just the line of 24. And then they <laughs> go and they sell it on Wall Street. The pretender lenders, they you know, they remain the search like Bank of America, like you know, well, it used to be Countrywide Bank of America, um, Wells Fargo, uh, Chase. These are all pretender lenders. They don't, they're not lending money. Have you done that with like a Bank of America? Or oh yeah, yeah, all time. Wachovia. We've done it with lines of credit. We've done it with you know. Um, but how do you get title? How do you get clear title? With we don't. I buy them with dirty title. I buy them and, and I exclude the I exclude the deficiencies in the title. So they say warrant you know special yeah, warranty yeah, deed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know we warrant that this property is free and clear of all liens except for that certain mortgage that was recorded in book page number blah 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 with, with Wachovia Bank on this date. You know and then it excludes that on my title policy. So I'm getting the title excluded. Now you know there's times that I don't even get title insurance. I wouldn't recommend <coughs> that to anybody else. But there's times I don't even get it. It's all like you know I have somebody say look just take over my mortgage payment. Yeah, you know, your risk. I don't have any risk, so what do I have to lose? Well, I have to lose my upside, maybe. I have to lose, you know, maybe some other stuff. If I rehab in the property, I have to lose that. So, I mean, sometimes I'll ask them for a partial title policy, and a lot of title companies don't like doing partials, but you can. You say, well, look, the lender already has a title policy for the amount they got skin in the game. You know, just give me a $30,000 title policy, and a lot of the title companies <coughs> you know, don't. I can see their apprehension. Don't like that, but you, you can do it. You can do it, you know, like a, almost like a gap, you know, type thing, coverage, but... Um, but you know a lot of a lot of these, and a lot of what we do is we use these strategies together. Where you know maybe we'll take over a loan, but it needs to be reinstated. It needs a bunch of rehab, so we'll have a subject to first mortgage, and we'll have a private money second mortgage. And when we when we have private investors putting up money, I mean typically on a second we pay more money on a second than we would interest on a first, something like that. Um, also with the seller financing, sometimes you have subject to mortgage, and you have. Uh, Seller's got a bunch of equity, where you can you can actually take over the loan and then pay them on the second. The seller the seller well, gets the second. Do you loan. try to get the bank to assign it to you? No, you don't try to do that. No, no. You know, with VA loans, you can do that. Used to be, yeah, 1986, I think was the last one. VA. Really, they yeah. don't do that anymore. 1986, it stopped. Yeah. From my understanding, I, I haven't seen it. Now, you know, in a situation where <clears> it's in default, you know, a lot of times most of the subject two loans that were taken over are already in default. So we're the guys reinstate them. We're the guys solving this problem. We're the guys bringing the payments current. We're the ones that say, look, we're going to make the payments current. We're going to make it every month. And sometimes you just, I just stick my head in the lion's mouth. 
and tell them, I'm not going to guarantee the payments. I'm going to do this, but I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sign a note, but I'm going to bring the thing current and I'll make the payments each and every month. And you know, they typically don't have a problem. Now think about like your little, little corner bank, you know, the person that's collecting that check isn't the same as somebody at Bank of America that says, Department 762 is collecting the check, or maybe it's a machine. And it's yeah, going to when, you, when you go to sell that property and you want to clear the title, right? and the bank doesn't give you a clear title because you didn't. No, sure. You, when you I go to sell the property or yeah. refinance the property, I'm paying that off. I, I get a power of attorney yeah. from the, a limited power of attorney from the, the uh, so. mortgage or yeah, from the seller. If you're buying it with dirty title, you're selling it with clean title. Right. What if the bank tells you that you, you weren't the original borrower. We're going to charge you another twenty five thousand for what? They can do that. No, it's not in the. There's no. If, it, if, you, if they in fact that he's the first person I've ever met. They can't. They can't do that. The terms of the note are the terms of the note. The note. Yeah. They, they take. No. If they take the money. They're well, going. I mean, they're going any rights they otherwise would have had. You know, paragraph. It's, it's tough paragraph. Work. I think it's paragraph nineteen in no, the policy. So. Traditional, you know, Fannie Mae note, well, whatever. Traditional note. Paragraph nineteen says. The bank has the right to call the loan due. It doesn't in any way say that they have to call it due. It says they have the right to if they so choose. And you, know, and you also said that in commercial you can't do that. Well, I have never done a, a subject to in commercial, but I am trying like hell. And I came very close to putting one together. So I know it can be done. <laughs> well, well you know, anything can be done if you have a willing, yeah. you know, yeah. willing to work with it. You know, the question. A lot of the loan documents are just so... Uh, so uh, rigid, I would say that. They just change it before you sign them. <laughs> well, <laughs> I right, so just want to back up a little bit. <clears throat> so you're buying a house with a mortgage on it, which you do on sale clause, but you're getting title put in your name. You're getting title insurance with an exclusion right. for the for that the mortgage, home. For the and the bank, yeah, and easier. the bank is happy because they say, "What the hell." This guy's gonna get car rent and I'll get my money. We went non-performing at a market rate. We went non-performing and we went to performing. Now, like I said, I've never been in a market. I've never been in a market where rates were twenty percent. So I started out, you know, nine years ago. So if I was back in the eight, eight, nineteen eighty, was you know, like rates were crazy. like crazy. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't Carter, Carter, Carter years, years, right? The Carter 22%, years, twenty-two percent, twenty-two percent, eleven points, right? <laughs> Something like that. So, so in those years. You know, we haven't we haven't seen that done. But now, granted, okay, let's say we're all goes to hell in a handbasket, and they call it a loan due. Okay, in Pennsylvania, what does that mean? That means they file a complaint mortgage foreclosure. When is a complaint mortgage foreclosure? You get notice. If you do absolutely nothing, you throw it in the trash. How long does it take them before the sheriff serves? Six, months. Six to nine months. Yeah. Six to nine months. If you do nothing, if you answer that complaint, if they stop taking your payments, and you answer the complaint, it drags it out. It drags it out. It drags it out. Two years. So I bought my. Time to refinance. What's that? Which would give you time. Time to, to refinance. Time to sell the house. Time to do all sorts of stuff. And so you, you know, you can solve. Time to bring in a different. But lender. No, but it's not your name on the note. It's right. the other guy. The original loan's name on the note. Right. So it doesn't go against your credit. Right. It goes against the other person's credit. But you know, I we actually had a situation. Yeah. Is that the other thing here? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Just tell them that. We had a rehab that we're we're doing right now uh, in Fishtown where. You know, it's, it's quite a bit of rehab. I think we're doing like 65 grand or it was an 80 grand rehab, something like that. And the the person, we took over a note and she, she said, I want you to guarantee that in six months, this thing, or three months or six months, this thing is gonna get paid off. So a couple months go by and uh, she calls us back and she, cause she's like, I'm a little nervous about leaving this loan to my name. This is the first person I've ever had that said they're nervous about leaving their name. A lot of times we just quash that right in the beginning. But what happened was she didn't really, she she knew the price that she was getting for the house because we had somebody else negotiated the deal. And we would, I was the first time she met me was at the closing table. So I come in there and we say, okay, we're going to take over the mortgage payment, blah, blah, blah. We're going to sign this limited power attorney, blah, blah. She goes, what's all this? I never heard her talk about this. Well, I, somebody else closed the deal and I'm like, oh, you, you didn't go over all this? And she's like, oh. So then we kind of conference call and it was, you know, just miscommunication. So she goes, all right. I said, look, we can pay off the loan. You just can't close today. You know, let's we'll go out two weeks and we'll close and we'll pay off the loan and we'll have another closing. Or I can just give you the twenty grand today if we can take over the payments. She said, okay, we'll do it today, but I want you to guarantee me it's paid off in six months. I said, okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll do that. Six months is fine. Hmm. So, a couple months go by and she says, I was talking to my friend and she had somebody take over her loan 